Roaches are the most resilient and hardcore bugs of all time, which is why for the next 100 days, I'll be surviving as a roach in Minecraft. Using my endurance and speed, I'll survive dangerous settings and mutate into bigger and stronger forms. Will I be able to save my people from the mutant mantis or get stomped in the process? You'll have to watch until the end to find out. On day one, I spawned in as a roach in my roach colony all around me were my friends and family, all happily living together. Suddenly, a massive nuclear missile came down and crashed into my colony from the sky above. My people survived, but our home transformed into a mutated wasteland. What's happening? From the crater, a giant mutant mantis walked out and towered over us. Today marks the beginning of a new mutated world, and I'm going to be its leader. The only thing that stands in my way. Are you filthy roaches? Just then, the mantis unleashed his army of mutant insects onto our people. My roach brothers and sisters tried to fight back with their sharp pincers, but it wasn't enough to defeat the mutant army. One of the mutant bugs jumped at me, and I started to run for my life. But my mom was able to protect me before I was hurt. Mom! Bronzo, you must escape this place before the mutant mantis captures you. You're our last hope of saving our home. I listened to my mom's warning and ran for my life as she held off the mutant insects. Then, after that little roach, don't let a single one escape. On day two, I was being chased by the mutant mantis's army. I ran as fast as my six legs could carry me, but I was soon cornered by a deep chasm in the ground. How am I supposed to get past this? The mutants were catching up to me, so I was forced to try and make a jump for it. To my surprise, my back opened up and I realized that I had the ability to fly. I glided over the gap and evaded the evil mutants. Ha! Good luck catching me now. Suddenly, a mutant insect that was bigger and stronger than the other ones dropped behind me. Where do you think you're going, punk? The mutant used his long legs to hit me with heavy attacks. I tried to fly around him, but he managed to hit me with his soul beam. Thanks to my natural roach armor, I was able to endure it, but I was left with only a few hearts remaining. You won't survive another one of those. The monster went in for the kill, but before he was able to finish me off, a spider hopped out and shot webs at him, trapping him in place. Come with me, I'm getting you out of here. I took my chance and fled the area with the spider before the mutant bug could escape her webs. On day three, the spider and I found a place to hide from the mutant insect army. I'm so confused, what's going on? The mutant mantis used five nuclear bombs to take over the world. My family is at one of those bomb sites and they're in danger. I want to help. Take me to them. I followed the spider to the first bomb site, a nuclear power plant. The air itself was green from radiation. In the middle of the rubble, we found her family surrounded by a pool of toxic waste. They had nowhere to run. Please do something. I can't reach them. I knew what I had to do. I spread my wings and flew over the dangerous waste. However, before I could reach the spiders, the biggest scarab I had ever seen emerged from the goo. Oh, spiders are mine. The beast attacked me, sending a powerful gust before teleporting up close to try and hit me. But I used my wings to dodge the attack. When I had the chance, I flew in and bit him with my roach pincers. Unfortunately, the enemy was too tough for me to take down. He shot a purple poison projectile attack at me, causing one of my wings to clip. I fell from the sky and into the pool of toxic waste below me. On days four 
through five, instead of being killed by the toxic waste, I emerged in a new mutant form. I now had five more hearts and a new toxic arrow ability. I must have survived the radiation because I'm a roach. You're not winning that easily. I'll crush ya. He summoned a bunch of grubs in hopes of overtaking me, but I shot back a five arrow barrage and slowly whittled down their numbers. The toxins burnt into the monster and he was unable to stand my new powers. He died to my strength and I realized that my mutation was the key to saving my people. I need to find the other four nuclear sites. I might be able to save my home. With the mutant defeated, I carried the spiders to safety and reunited them with their family. Thank you so much for saving everyone. Suddenly, the sky grew dark and it began to rain over us. In our small size, water rolled down towards us as fast as a river. Take cover! The spiders fled, but unfortunately, I got washed away in the storm. On days six through seven, the water swept me away until I landed into a swamp biome. On the top of the lily pads was a massive lizard looking for its next meal. If they see me, I'll get eaten. I need to get out of here. I was about to fly away when I spotted another insect come from the sky. The lizard was able to spot them right away. Dinner time. The lizard jumped up towards the insect and swallowed them up in a single gulp. Uh-oh, flying is a bad idea. I'm going to have to sneak my way out of this. Instead of flying, I jumped from lily pad to lily pad, trying to stay out of the sight of the predator. I was nearing the shore when suddenly a mutant worm popped out of the water in front of me. I got you now, run away. The worm knocked me in the water and I swam away as it chased after me. I was so desperate to escape, I didn't realize that I headed straight for a giant waterfall. I tried to fight the current, but it was too late. I was going down. Ah! I fell down the waterfall and everything went dark. On days eight through nine, I woke up in the middle of the ocean. I thought I would drown, but thanks to my mutation, I had the water breathing ability. Did the worm stop following me? Suddenly, the mutant worm charged towards me out of nowhere. You're not escaping me. I thought I was a goner until a shark swam by and swallowed the mutant bug whole. Whoa, that was a close one. Luckily, the shark didn't seem to spot me. I had spoken too soon as the fish Fish began to transform before my very eyes. The mutant worm caused him to mutate into a giant sea monster that was even more powerful. The beast snapped his jaws at me, but I managed to dodge out of the way of his sharp teeth. Take this! I used my toxic projectile ability to try and weaken the sea monster. However, he was swift and dodged my attacks. Things were looking bad when suddenly I noticed my projectile hit the ground, causing a magma block to appear. I've got an idea. I set my sights to the seafloor and began to shoot my radioactive projectiles at it. Magma blocks covered the ground and created a whirlpool that sucked the sea monster away from me. That won't hold him forever. I better keep moving. Just then, I spotted something glowing green in the distance. I decided to follow it and see what it was. On days 10 through 12, I arrived at the source of the glowing to find a sunken submarine emitting a green radioactive light. I could sense something powerful inside of it. Maybe I could use something in there to get stronger. I went inside of the submarine and found some food as well as a potion of regeneration to help me on my journey. As I continued deeper, I spotted a glowing radiation gem that was the source of the energy I had been feeling. Whoa, what does that do? Before I was able to grab it, the mutant mantis smashed through the roof of the submarine. I quickly found cover as my arch enemy claimed the radiation gem for himself. I watched as he gained powerful wind slicing abilities. Show yourself, Grouch. I can't get caught. I swam around until I made it outside when suddenly the mutant mantis ambushed me and used his tornado attack 
on me. He managed to slice me down, leaving me with only a single heart. Just as I thought I was done for, I heard someone call out to me. Over here! I followed the mysterious voice through a passage, escaping the mutant mantis for now. On days 13 through 15, I arrived on the other side of the passage to find myself back at a beach shore. There, I saw a silverfish standing in front of me. Thank goodness you came. I need the help of a roach to get something I lost. I'm always happy to help. Lead the way. I followed the silverfish to a contaminated area full of toxic waste. At the top of a mountain peak in the distance was a strange amulet. That's my amulet. I accidentally lost it out there and now this place is full of radioactive goo. Leave it to me. I began to fly towards the amulet when suddenly the area began to shake violently. Just then, the mountain erupted into flames. It turned out that I was flying straight over a volcano. Uh-oh. I dodged the incoming fireballs to the best of my abilities and flew closer and closer towards the amulet. A stray fireball hit me for loads of damage, but I was able to hang on thanks to my roach armor. Finally, I made it to reach the top of the mountain and claimed the amulet. I returned to the silverfish and handed over the lost object. Here you go. Thanks. This will make it easier to kill you. What? Before I could stop her, the silverfish absorbed the amulet and transformed into a mutant silverfish. Without hesitation, she attacked me. On days 16 through 18, I found myself going toe to toe with the mutant silverfish in a good old fashioned slugfest. The mutant silverfish lashed out at me with a grand slam pound attack that sent earth flying, causing some serious damage. I had no choice but to back off for a second and eat to gain my health back. As I felt my strength return, I attacked her with a barrage of arrows. She used a tail sweep and threw some smaller silverfish to try and throw me off. Enough of this fooling around! I gathered all my anger and launched it all in one deadly blast, destroying the mutant silverfish and causing her to drop a map. Wasting no time, I rushed over to inspect it. Shipwreck? What is this all about? I followed the map to find a shipwreck that was washed up on the shore of a beach. It was glowing with a green light, just like the submarine. Aha! There must be something inside of that shipwreck that could make me even stronger. I made my way over and was about to hop inside when out of nowhere a group of pirates appeared to stop me Yar, stop right there you mutated vermin this here be captain salty beard ship but I need to go inside to save my colony. Well, tell you what there, matey. If you can prove you're tough enough to finish me trials of bravery, I'll be letting you inside then. All right, you're on. On days 19 through 22, I was face to face with the first of Captain Saltybeard's trials of bravery. I was standing before an obstacle course with the threat of boiling lava below. Good luck. Don't be falling into the lava or you'll be toast. <laughs> right. I activated my mighty wings and flew through the rings one by one, narrowly escaping the heat of the lava below me. In no time, I was at the end of the course and I had successfully completed the challenge. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Don't wear yourself out yet. There are still two more to go. The next trial would prove to be more difficult. I was tasked to search the beach for buried treasure. I began digging without wasting a moment. After some time, I had made tons of holes, but I had found nothing. I wanted to give up, but I knew I couldn't. Not after making it this far. This is taking forever. I have to speed this up. I used my mutant power to destroy the ground, sending sand particles all over until the treasure was revealed. That was a close one. Not bad, but you still have the final trial. What could it be? Defeat me in a battle. The captain drew an even larger sword and the battle began. He swung his sword at me and I took the hit. Cheap shot. How do you like this? I fought back with my mutant attacks and overwhelmed him into surrendering. 
I, I have been defeated. You may enter me ship. Take me there. The two of us headed back to the boat, but right when we were about to board it, the giant sea monster appeared and destroyed it. Looks like we have company. On days 23 to 26, I was facing off with the horrifying sea monster in an attempt to reclaim the ship. He used the water beam to attack me, dealing lots of damage to my little roach frame. I retaliated back with my acid spray powers, but I wasn't strong enough to deal any damage to the beast. I don't think I'll be able to hold on much longer. Run, me boy. Look at the rubble. I looked down and realized a glowing radioactive totem had fallen out of the ship. I got quick on my feet to distract the monster with a toxic projectile and quickly flew in to snatch the totem. Energy surged through me as I transformed into my third form and gained five hearts. With my bigger claws and mandibles, I could now do a bloody slash attack. All right, time to turn this fish into sushi. I tried out my new blood slash attacks and I was now dealing a ton of damage to the sea monster. Monster. He tried to retaliate with his tidal waves, but I weaved and dodged it and then got another good final hit, killing it once and for all. That's the power of a roach. Out of nowhere, the mutant mantis's men had arrived. All of the fighting had attracted them to find our location. My men will hold them off. I'll get you somewhere safe. Just like that, I had run away with the captain while the others held back the mantis goons. On days 27 to 30, I followed Captain Saltybeard. He had led me to a village so that I could have time to heal. I don't know about this place. Villagers don't like roaches like me. Are you sure it's safe? Of course. These folks are me friends. Go check it out for yourself. Captain Saltybeard left me behind, and I stumbled into a house where I was greeted by a friendly villager. Oh no, you poor deer. Please take this food. A roach should never be left unfed. They handed me some bread, and I devoured it, healing me up to full health. Wow, thanks. I really appreciate that. Out of nowhere, a zombie villager broke through the window of the home and bit my new friend, causing them to transform into a zombie as well. Brains. Hold on, what the heck is going on? I rushed back outside and realized the entire village had been infected and turned into zombies. What? When did this happen? They all looked at me and charged, heading straight for my brains. On days 31 to 34, I was under the attack of the relentless zombie villagers. I tried to use my blood powers to keep them away, but unfortunately for me, one managed to bite me. No, no, I don't want to be a zombie roach. I kept fighting back, waiting for the moment I would change, but to my surprise, nothing happened. It looks like roaches are immune to zombie bites. Just then, I spotted a gardener cornered by a horde of zombies. I knew I had to do something. Someone help me! I can't die here! Not like this! I'm coming! Just hold on! I flew in and used my mutant powers to once again fight off the zombies and brought the gardener to safety where I could gather more information on the attacks. What's going on here? Everything was just fine a second ago. A village nearby was hit with a nuclear missile, turning everyone who lived there into zombies. Now it's spreading out to other villages, including my home. If you can take me to your home, I'll help defend it for you. I'm immune to zombie bites. Really? Thank you. Come with me. Let's try not to get caught. With that, we snuck around the zombie infested area and escaped. On days 35 to 38, I arrived at the gardener's town to find that people were still normal. Unfortunately, as I entered the town, I forgot this wasn't a roach friendly place. All of the villagers turned towards me in fear. Is that a roach? Ah! The civilians began running around in a frenzy. No, wait, I'm good. Someone call the exterminator. Suddenly, a massive exterminator stomped forward to stop me. Prepare to die, pest. Roaches don't belong here. He used his bug killing pistols that shot a barrage of poison blasts at me. My health was chipping away, but I didn't want to fight back. I tried to make it stop, but he wouldn't listen to reason. The exterminator 
kept blasting me with their pistol attack, causing me to lose even more health. Just as I thought I was going to have to fight back, the gardener that brought me here intervened. Stop! He's here to help! Everyone stopped attacking immediately, but right before I could find peace, a zombie ran in and bit the exterminator. His entire body transformed into a giant zombie. Brains. Uh-oh, everyone run! The villagers ran away as the zombie exterminator attacked me. On days 39 through 42, I was defending the village from the zombie fight exterminator. I thought the exterminator was already powerful, but now in his zombie form, he had super strength. He had an earth-shaking ability that sent me flying. I won't let you hurt these people! I retaliated against him using my acid blast power. Power. With a poison arrow barrage, I managed to finally stop him. As the exterminator fell, the villagers felt safe enough to come out from their hiding spots. Thank you for saving us and protecting our village. And sorry for attacking you. You just look so scary. It's okay. No problem. Just don't judge a book by its cover next time. All right? Yeah. And listen, we want to help. Here. Take this map. It'll lead you to the source of all the nuclear waste that's turning people into zombies. They tossed the map over to me, and after inspecting it, I knew where the next nuclear site was. I flew off, heading to the next site, ready to put an end to this as quickly as possible. On days 43 through 46, I finally arrived at the location on the map. The next nuclear site was a radioactive graveyard. I scoped out the area and spotted the nuclear totem in in the center of the place. Unfortunately, the area was always being watched over by a mutant armadillo. I guess I better pick that up before anything else gets a hold of it and mutates. I began to sneak my way towards the radioactive material, cautiously hiding behind whatever cover I could find. Unfortunately, I got spotted. Hi, stop right there, intruder. The mutant armadillo began running towards me, but before they could get close enough to catch me, I used my acid blast to burn a pit into the ground. They fell in, getting trapped and unable to escape. Why, you will. You'll pay for this. Once I get out of here, you're mid mate. Wow, close call. I really need to pick up the pace. Just as I got close enough to grab the radioactive material, a fox scurried out of nowhere and snatched it up. No, hey, stop. As the radioactivity coursed through its body, the fox began to mutate into a horrible beast. The radioactive material dropped from its now toothy maw as it charged at me. On days 47 through 50, I was under attack by the mutated fox. The fox let out an icy roar and tried to pummel me with its freezing fists. I struck back at him with my acidic arrows, but I could only barely get through the creature's thick fur. It was a close fight. Right as I was about to strike the mutated fox once more, the mutated armadillo lunged at me. He must have managed to escape my trap. The armadillo stomped the ground, sending a tremor barreling towards me. If that wasn't enough, he then started flinging massive boulders at me. No no way! I can't take on two enemies at once! I really need to get that radioactive material! I made a desperate run for the radioactive material, but every time I got close, I had to dodge an attack. I wasn't going to be able to keep this up. Two enemies was just too much to handle. I had to think of something quick if I was going to make it. That's it! I've got it! Hey dummy, come and get me! The mutant armadillo came charging at me in a blind rage. Right as he was about to hit, me, I dodged out of the way, and he struck the mutated fox instead. The fox creature retaliated immediately, striking back at the mutant armadillo. Perfect! Now's my chance! With the two enemies preoccupied with each other, I ran up and grabbed the radioactive material, gaining five more hearts and a new acid rain power. Take this! I blasted both of my foes with my new poison rain ability, defeating them both without any problems. As the mutant armadillo died, he dropped a map titled Mantis Base. Mantis Base, huh? Looks like a good lead. I better follow this and see what the mutant mantis is planning. On days 51 through 54, I was following the map towards the mutant mantis's base. As I approached, I saw the mutant mantis speaking to a crowd of his men in front of a giant machine. 
I took another look around, spotting my colony locked in cages. Mom, my people! He captured them all! Seeing them locked up made my blood boil. I wanted to rush in and save them, but I had to stay hidden for now. My attention shifted as I began to eavesdrop on the mutant mantis's speech. Yes, my minions, today I am here to show you all the next phase of my plan. Behold, the Rout Killer! Once my device is complete, I will be able to eliminate all the roaches once and for all. Roach killer? Oh no, I need to get them out of here before it's too late. I snuck my way over to the cages, eager to free them and escape together. Ronzo, what are you doing here? I'm trying to save you. I tried opening the cage, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to budge. I was so focused on trying to open the cages that I didn't realize a guard was approaching. Hey, stop right there. What? It's the mutated roach. And the guards came rushing at me, and I knew I didn't stand a chance against them all, but I couldn't leave my colony behind. Bronzo, stop! You have to run! Now! I'll come back for you! I promise! Angry and desperate, I ran as fast as I could, being chased by the mutant mantis's minions. Eventually, I spotted a giant trash pile at the edge of the city in the distance, and made a beeline for it. I hopped inside, taking cover, when I suddenly felt like I was being watched. Turning around, I saw I was surrounded by glowing eyes. The trash pile was full of scorpions. Ah! Within seconds, they all lunged at me and I blacked out. On days 55 through 58, I woke up inside of a junkyard surrounded by scorpions. Standing in front of me was the queen scorpion. Oh, finally awake, I see. Now, tell me, Roach, what brings you to my kingdom? I was struggling to find the words to reply when I spotted a nuclear nugget in the distance. This must have been one of the nuclear sites I was looking for. No way! There! That! I came here to get that nuclear nugget over there. The nuclear nugget, you say? <laughs> Now, now, my dear, the only way I allow anyone to touch my personal hoard is to undergo my three deadly trials. If you manage to complete them, well, maybe then I'll let you claim one of my treasures. Fine, I'll do anything. <laughs> well then, my little roach, let the trials begin. I followed the queen scorpion to a table full of rotten food. Next to the table was another scorpion. For the first trial, the winner will be the creature who can eat the most trash. Are you Ready, my dearies? Ready, set, go! The other scorpion hesitated for a second as I began gobbling up as much trash as I could. Any other creatures would have been sick in seconds, but thanks to my resilient roach body, I could eat anything. Mmm. You know what? This isn't even that bad. The other scorpion, realizing how much they were falling behind, began to take giant bites out of the rotten food. After only a few bites, the scorpion got sick and collapsed. Well, well, well. Looks like my dear little roach wins the first trial. No time to waste, though. On to the second. On days 59 through 62, I arrived at the other part of the junkyard, where the second trial would take place. The second trial is a test of strength. Only the strongest creature will pass. Time for me to prove myself. I went up to a nearby wall and used my poison arrow barrage to destroy it in a single blow. Beat that! Gladly. The scorpion found a junk car and used his mighty stomp attack to smash straight through it. Not bad. I may have already chosen my winner. I was running out of time. I had one last chance to prove myself, and I spotted a big building nearby. That's it. Eat this. I used my poison spray attack on the building, causing the whole thing to collapse. Oh my. That was impressive. The roach wins the second trial. Sweet. Two down, one to go. On days 63 through 66, I was taken to a stage in the junkyard where a crowd of scorpions were watching. The final trial is a talent show. Impress me with your amazing powers. My scorpion rival began his act first. He was able to call forth lightning strikes and cause himself to float up into the air full of electric power. Watching this made the crowd go absolutely wild. Uh-oh, that was a tough act to beat. Break a leg. <laughs> All right, Bronzo, you can do this. I stood in front of the crowd, determined to put on the best show 
how I possibly could. I started off using my flying ability to shoot up into the air and fly in circles around the crowd. I showed off all the powers I had collected while spinning through the air and then finally ended with a fireworks show. I think we have a clear winner here. Congratulations, cockroach. Allow me to retrieve your prize. The queen went over to her pile to grab the nuclear nugget when I realized it would be dangerous for her to touch it. Wait, stop! But it was too late. And when she picked it up, she transformed into a huge mutant monster. On day 67 through 70, I was under attack by the mutated scorpion queen. She used her powerful mutant powers on me, and I did my best to evade her attacks without hurting her. Queen, it's me, your favorite cockroach. No matter what I said, she just kept slashing at me. My words couldn't get through to her. I have to make her drop the nuclear nugget. I finally started using my powers on her, but they had no effect. I was getting low on health when my competitor ran up to us. I have an idea. I can help. Go for it. The scorpion used his lightning powers from the show to distract the mutated queen until he gave me the signal. Now! I flew in at her and landed a big attack, causing her to drop the nuclear nugget. She transformed back to normal, but the nuclear nugget fell into a deep chasm. No! I can't lose my prize! I immediately flew into the chasm after it. On days 71 through 74, I flew into the bottom of the chasm, and I quickly realized something was wrong. I was in an incinerator. The nuclear nugget was sitting on a conveyor belt, moving towards a pit of lava. I need to grab that before it burns up. I went after it when suddenly the room started to tremble and out of the pit came a lava monster. Oh boy, fresh meat. He blasted me with his fire powers and I did the best I could to fight back. He shot a giant fireball from his mouth that went rocketing past me, exploding as it impacted the wall. He opened his mouth and belched a steady cone of fire. So I backed away Way and shot him with a barrage of poison arrows. I began showering down my acid rain as I continued to dodge around him. Neither of us were going down. It was an equal match, and the nuclear nugget was getting closer to the lava by the second. Enough of this! You're wasting my time! I flew right past him and grabbed the nuclear nugget just as it was about to fall. I immediately absorbed its energy, gaining five more hearts and an atomic blast power. It doesn't matter if you're stronger now, you'll still burn. He blasted me, but I dodged it and used my new powers on him. He immediately fell to his death and dropped a map in his place. Huh, where does this go? I better check it out. On days 75 through 78, I followed the map and found myself at a park. When I got there, I spotted a bee colony who was under attack by a mutant bear. Give me your honey. Never! The bear used a powerful mutant attack on the bees, taking out a ton of them. If somebody didn't do something soon, they were all gonna die. I have to help them. I flew in as quickly as I could to help my insect brethren. I attacked the bear, and he fought back with his mutant powers, but I was able to withstand his radiation. Eventually, he realized he couldn't beat me and ran off. The king will hear about this. What's going on, bees? The bears have been after our honey for years, but thanks to the nuclear bombs, they have mutated into even stronger forms. We can't win. Looks like you need an ally. I'll help you guys. That's great. Come with me. It's time for us to strike back. On days 79 through 82, I followed the bee army to the bear's den and found it surrounded by radioactive goo. Be sure to avoid that stuff. It'll kill normal insects in an instant. The bees all followed me safely over the goo until we made it to the top of the den. There he is. There's the roach that hurt me. The bears all turned to us and attacked. Charge! The bees and the bears collided in an epic clash, and I used my powers to back up my bee allies. We were all starting to get an edge on them when suddenly the bear king emerged from his den. So that's the king he was talking about. Enough of this. You're going down, roach. 
The Bear King charged at me, and our epic clash began. Immediately, he swung his thick arms, trying to swipe me with his claws, and he attempted to then crush me with a bear hug. Luckily, my thick armor helped me withstand it. I leapt back and summoned my acid rain, which seemed to eat through his dense fur. He switched tactics and used his own mutated powers, spraying a poisonous blast in my direction, then followed up with an awesome flurry of slashes. Suddenly, he snapped his mighty jaws at me and swallowed me in a single gulp. Ooh, yummy. On days 83 to 86, I woke up inside of the Bear King's stomach. It was the nastiest place I had ever been. Oh no, I need to get out of here and help the bees. There's no escaping here. I've been down here for years. I turned around and spotted a butterfly that had been eaten previously by the Bear King. We can't give up and I have the perfect idea how to escape. I started to use my acid powers on the inside of the stomach of the Bear King, giving him the biggest tummy ache ever. I, I think it's working. Suddenly, the Bear King spat out both me and the butterfly. We were back in the normal world in the heart of the bear's den. You did it! You saved us! Thanks! I looked around and saw the nuclear core that had been turning the bears into mutants. I need to grab it and put a stop to this! You're not touching my prized nuclear core or... The bear king was furious and charged at me to attack. On days 87 to 90, I fought the Bear King head to head with the help of my butterfly ally. The beast used his acidic splash attack onto me, dealing loads of damage. I fought back with my poison powers, hoping to stop the king in his tracks, but it wasn't enough. He kept charging straight towards me. We're going to lose at this rate! Then I'll have to the butterfly dove for the nuclear core, causing her to lose control and turn into a mutant. No! What are you doing? The mutated butterfly began to rampage and killed the bear king in the process. <laughs> Quickly after, she ran away from the den, leaving nothing but destruction in her path. I have to get the nuclear core from her before she causes more damage. I flew after my friend, determined to save her and the others in her way. On days 91 through 93, I followed my friend to a clearing where we could battle safely. I am all powerful! No one can stop me! Sorry, this will only hurt for a second. The new mutated butterfly turned to me and attacked. They now harnessed the power of storms and called down countless bolts of lightning to rain down on me. I slashed out at them with my blood slashes, but they followed up with powerful electric blasts, and I did my best to dodge out of the way. I had to defend myself. I shot back with poisonous sprays and arrows, intent on winning this. I took careful aim and used my atomic explosion to try and knock the effect off my ally. It worked. After a huge blast, they dropped the artifact. Rapidly, the butterfly transformed back to normal. Ow! My head is killing me! Thanks for the help, Bronzo! No problem. Thanks for saving me back there. I was making my way over to pick up the nuclear core when a bunch of the mutant mantis's minions arrived. No way we'll let you keep your hands on this. Time to die. The minions were on me within seconds. I tried my best to fight them off, but they got the jump on me, and I was still hurt from fighting my butterfly friend. Before I knew it, I got knocked out. On days 94 through 96, I awoke to find myself inside of a cage, suspended over a pit of lava. Taking in my surroundings, I spotted the mutant mantis with the artifact that I needed. Ah, so you're I'm awake. Now the fun can begin. The fun? What do you mean? Let me go! Unfortunately, I've had enough of your games. This time, I'm going to be sure to kill you once and for all. Just as the mutant mantis finished speaking, the floor opened up under my feet. No! My butterfly friend swooped in and pushed me out of the way. I fell to the side, but she fell into the lava and burnt away. No! You'll pay for this! I charged at the mutant mantis, grabbing the nuclear core. I gained five hearts and grew bigger and more powerful. No, you unbelievable past general, get him! Suddenly, a mutant nether bug appeared, 
ready to kill me. On days 97 and 98, I was fighting against the general, getting vengeance for my fallen ally. The beast opened the battle with the horrible amalgamation of tentacles that reached out of the ground to grapple me. The mass blinded me, but I managed to break free and shoot him with some acid arrows. He started to pummel me with balls of blazing fire. Things were getting heated. I had to find a way out of this. As I dodged his attacks, I spotted some TNT and got an idea. That's it, you're going down. Before he could react, I shot a projectile at the TNT, causing a huge explosion. As the dust settled, all that remained was the mutant mantis. No! That's it! It's time to end this! In a rage, the mutant mantis flew back towards his base. I realized he was going back to activate his machine, the roach killer! Oh no! I have to stop him before he wipes out my whole colony! I took off after him, desperate to stop him before he could enact his terrible plan. On day 99, I arrived at the mutant mantis's base. My colony was in cages, hanging from underneath it. Mom! Hold on! I'm coming for you! I flew towards them as fast as I could, but I was stopped by the mutant mantis's minions. Nah, there's no way we'll let you get past us. Oh yeah? Looks like I'll have to force my way through then. Filled with anger, I used all the powers I had acquired over my journey to fight off the mutant mantis's minions. There were so many of them. Their numbers seemed endless, but my mutations had made me stronger than they could ever imagine. Imagine. I wasn't holding back and unleashed my atomic blast power to destroy the last of them with one mighty blast. It's time to put an end to this once and for all. With the path cleared, I made my way towards the mutant mantis. On day 100, I confronted the mutant mantis as he was powering up his machine, preparing to kill all the roaches. I sent a poison arrow at him, interrupting his process and causing him to turn towards me. You annoying little pest. Looks like you just won't give up. Of course not. I never would. This is your last chance, Mantis. Free my mom and the rest of my colony, or face the power of a roach. <laughs> You're pathetic. I've come much too far to lose to the likes of you. Face my wrath. The mutant Mantis powered on the machine and grew even bigger than he was before. He turned and let loose with a barrage of radioactive poison attacks, more deadly than ever before. Even with my poison resistance, they caused massive damage. Quickly, the Mantis launched a projectile that drew me in and caused a massive nuclear implosion. I thought I was done for, but I remembered my potion of regeneration. I drank it, and I was back in the fight. Suddenly, through the chaos of the fight, I heard my mom calling out to me. Rondo, you can do it! I believe in you! <laughs> With my remaining strength, I let loose a massive thermonuclear outburst and overwhelmed the mutant mantis. Despite his power, he still wasn't strong enough to overcome my strength. With one last blow, I defeated him. As the mutant mantis fell, I let out a sigh of relief. I had done it. My colony was saved. You're free, mom. We did it. Bro!